So let's talk about Ethereum versus Bitcoin. All right, first I'll talk about how they're similar, and then I'll talk about how they're different. And I want to make this video in case you're thinking about either investing in these technologies and want to know how they work, or if you're actually thinking about building blockchain technology and want to leverage the power of these technologies for your business. So I'm thinking about both of these types of people in mind. So I'll try to keep these discussions high level, but they should give you a pretty good idea of how the two technologies are similar and different. So let's talk about how they're similar. All right, and I'll actually pull up my whiteboard here on my computer and illustrate some of this. So the first way they're similar is that they're both cryptocurrencies, right? You can go on a website like coinmarketcap.com and see a huge list of cryptocurrencies out there. And you know, you'll see Bitcoin and Ethereum right at the top. And they're both digital currencies. They both have value. They both allow you to send currencies from one account to another, right? And you can purchase these on websites, you know, like coinbase.com or other exchanges that allow you to purchase cryptocurrencies with traditional currencies or fiat currencies, right? And both of these currencies are also blockchains, all right? That's the second way in which they're similar, all right? They're both blockchain. And that's important to understand because when you're looking at all these different types of cryptocurrencies out there, you know, they're not all blockchains, right? Some of them are tokens. Some of them are, uh, you know, different types of distributed ledger technologies. And I won't get into all those details today in this video, but it's an important distinction to make that some of these cryptocurrencies are actual blockchains and Bitcoin and Ethereum both fit that category. So what is a blockchain? Well, a blockchain is basically a big peer-to-peer -peer network that basically stores information, right? And it's public and it's secure because it's a lot of different computers that all participate in running this network. And they basically allow you to do things that other traditional stores of data and network couldn't do in the past, like model digital currency, right? So how is that? Why is that the case? Well, on this network, you know, there's a whole bunch of computers and each one of these computers is called a node. And each node basically holds a copy of all the data on the network. And that data will basically contain all the transaction information on the network. And all that transaction information allows you to fundamentally, you know, calculate the current balance on the network. So it'll always know how much currency you have in your wallet, okay? And that's what allows it to model money because it's public and pretty much anyone can participate in running this network. And it's unlike any other you know, financial system or really any technology that has come before it. All right, now both Ethereum and Bitcoin are blockchain, right? And they both have mining, all right? So what is mining? You might hear this, you might hear about mining Bitcoin or mining Ethereum or mining some other cryptocurrency. So not all cryptocurrencies can be mined, um, pretty much only cryptocurrencies that have blockchains, which I've already said, you know, Ethereum and Bitcoin are both blockchains, but not all blockchains support mining. <laughs> so I know this is getting really confusing really fast, but let me explain. So mining is part of what's called, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum's consensus mechanism, right? So what, it, what does that mean? What is consensus? Well, a consensus mechanism is at the core of how a blockchain behaves. It's the mechanism that allows uh, basically all the computers that are participating in the network to ensure that the data or the ledger on the network is not tampered with and that each copy of the ledger on the network is the same, right? So remember I said that every computer on the network has a copy of the ledger, right? And that's what allows it to check to see if everyone has the same copy. That's what makes it secure. So whenever this happens, the consensus mechanism is triggering, okay? And whenever new transactions are created, you know, for example, if I were to send you Bitcoin or if I were to send you Ethereum, certain computers on the network have to participate in writing new transactions to the network, okay? So that basically means that there's a smaller group of computers on the network that are responsible for creating new transactions, okay? That's where mining comes in, right? So. Whenever that happens, this smaller group of net, you know, nodes on the network, this smaller subset of computers called miners, 
basically use their computer power to create new transactions. And they do this by solving puzzles, okay? And I won't get too far into the details about how that works, but basically you have to pay for this, right? And that's why there's a transaction cost on both of these networks. Because they're both support mining, they both have transaction costs. And because of this, you know, anyone can connect to the network and become a miner. So they can basically use their computational resources to help run the network, and they're compensated for doing that. You know, it takes a lot of electricity to run an Ethereum node or a Bitcoin node, and that's sort of your incentive to join the network and actually participate in it and be a miner, is you can get paid for it. So let's talk about how these two technologies are different, okay? So first, they're really different in their sole purpose. So Bitcoin and Ethereum really have two different objectives. Essentially, Bitcoin's objective is to be a digital currency or digital payment alternative or a digital store of value, okay? You know, it's designed to basically for you to buy Bitcoin and hold it and store the value there. And, you know, you can also use it as a payment alternative to send Bitcoin from one, you know, person to another and pay that way, okay? Now, you can do the same thing on Ethereum, right? You can, you know, buy Ethereum and hold it like an asset. And you can, you know, just send Ethereum or Ether uh, back and forth between, you know, you and someone else to pay for things. But Ethereum has sort of this extra level that really reveals its true purpose, what it was designed to do, which is to be kind of like a global computer that's supposed to run programs, right? And you can run programs on Bitcoin. I don't want to get too deep into that, but... Ethereum is basically designed to run programs with pieces of code called smart contracts that run on the blockchain. Okay, so let me unpack that a little bit. So Ethereum is basically designed to run decentralized applications or dApps, like this channel, Dapp University. And it's supposed to allow you to run dApps with code on the blockchain with these things called smart contracts, right? And these smart contracts are the building blocks for blockchain-based applications, right? And now there are other blockchains that are, you know, trying to do things that are similar to Ethereum, where they're trying to become smart contract platforms. Um, and you can do more research on that. I've got other videos comparing Ethereum and like EOS and things like that. Now there's lots of other differences between these two blockchains, right? But that's really what I want to highlight is that they're different in purpose, right? And, you know, like I said, you could go into all kinds of little granular details about the block time, which is essentially how long it takes for new transactions to be mined and put in blocks, right? Remember I said that you have to mine. Now, there's lots of, like, small differences between Bitcoin and Ethereum that you, I could probably spend all day talking about, but that's a high level, right? So maybe another, like, small example would be that uh, they differ in their block time. So what is that, right? So remember I said a second ago that Ethereum and Bitcoin both support mining. Well, the block time is the amount of time it takes for new transactions to get included on the blockchain or into blocks. So the blockchain is made up of bundles of records called blocks, which are chained together to make up the blockchain. And each block is basically, you know, a, a bundle of transactions. You know, anytime I send you know, Ethereum back and forth to one account, it gets included in this bundle called a block. And it takes a certain amount of time for new transactions to get included in that block, okay? So that's just an example in another small way that they're different. And the differences in these two networks is probably gonna increase over time, right? Ethereum has a lot of, you know, upgrades that it's planning on doing that'll probably move away from proof of work, something like proof of stake, which I can explain in another video. And, you know, Bitcoin's talking about doing Lightning Network, which would, in, it, you know, it would improve uh, the speed of transactions, things like that. Both of these blockchains are actively working on scaling solutions that will probably, you know, accentuate their differences and make them, you know, just more different over time. So if y'all like this video, again, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And if you're interested in learning how to build blockchain technology, you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.